Hello again. In today's video, I'd like to talk about the different kinds of relay, including a home-make design. The first one is a conventional electromechanical relay. Uh, you put voltage on the coil, the uh, contactor would close. Uh, you remove the voltage, it will open. Uh, this contactor is used in our EcoTrack battery. So one on the charge side and one on the discharge side, so two of them. And the second one is a latching relay. Uh, the reason it's latching because you don't need a constant uh, power source to close it. You pulse it, it will latch. You pulse it again, it will unlatch. So this will be on and off, on and off, depends on how many times you pulse this. And this is also called a battery disconnect relay. Uh, this one is intermittent because sometimes it latch and sometimes it did not latch. So I've replaced this with another electromechanical relay. Uh, this one is nice because I could program the voltage. When the, po <coughs> when the voltage dropped below a certain level, I could disengage the relay and save the battery. Uh, the problem with this is this is only good for 30 amps. So 30 amp actually is all the DC current I would need in my uh, class B RV. Uh, most of the time I don't have everything on so I only use less than 10 amp as, at a time. So this uh, 30 amps uh, works good and this is being used currently replacing this one. And this is a homemade design. Uh, all three of these are electromechanical. This homemade design is uh, solid state. It doesn't have any uh, moving parts. And I could show you the uh, circuit diagram. Uh, this is what the circuit diagram looks like. And this is a uh, P-channel uh, MOSFET design. And this is a very nice uh, MOSFET uh, because most of the P-channel MOSFET has very high uh, internal resistance between the drain and the source. And this one is only uh, 3.8 milliohm and good for 120 amps, uh, one of them. In my design, I use four of them. So I could uh, reduce uh, the resistance to minimize the loss on the uh, solid state device. So I have four of them in th this design. And up front here is a uh, opto uh, coupler. So the input stage and output stage are uh, uncoupled. And I also have a, a programmable uh, low voltage disconnect. This one come with the relay, but I remove the relay and use the coil to drive the solder state part. So the relay is gone and the coil drive the solder state part. And this circuit and this circuit is all uh, built into a, a, uh, a sister board. And since I don't have the uh, printed circuit board capability. So I purchased this and changed the component and make the, the sister board to go along with this. And you can also buy an existing one. Uh, the Victron uh, makes something similar to this. I don't know exactly what is the internal construction but I'm sure it's uh, probably a similar design. And this design uh, is capable of running uh, about 80 amps and uh, right now I only need uh, 30 amps so I put a 50 amp circuit breaker in here. So this is a 50 amp circuit breaker and the other day I tested a uh, transient voltage suppression dial and it's being used in this uh, circuit. So if you take a look at the physical circuit uh, this is the low voltage cutoff device 
and this is the sister board as you can see the sister board sit on top of that and these are the four uh, MOSFET four MOSFET and this is the uh, transient voltage suppression dial and this is the uh, 50 amp circuit breaker so this design is very efficient and uh, the voltage drop on all four of them in parallel is uh, quite low and actually the circuit breaker almost has twice the voltage drop as the uh, MOSFET and this could handle a lot of current depends on the heat sink and uh, my heat sink right now I believe uh, could uh, runs about 10 watt of heat so this is good to about 80 amps but I only need uh, 30 so let me uh, do a demonstration uh, to run a uh, electrical heater and since this is my DC application but I don't have any load that is higher than uh, 10 amps so I have to use an inverter to uh, do the testing so the first thing is to turn it on I turn it on and the circuit the power supply is 13.8 uh, volt let me show the circuit the negative voltage run directly to the inverter shunt and from the inverter shunt go to the negative of the inverter and the positive uh, uh, circuit go to the input of the solid state relay through the circuit breaker and then go out into another circuit breaker for the inverter for the inverter and this is 150 amp and go to the inverter uh, right there uh, because inverter has very large capacitors if I close this, this it uh, might not allow me to do that because this is a ignition control I'm sorry ignition protect so in order for it to uh, bypass this problem I use a one ohm uh, power resistor to initially uh, charge up the, the capacitors I'm sorry if I said capacitor I mean uh, capacitor a very large capacitor so once the capacitors charge up I could close the circuit now so now it's closed I could disconnect the capacitor uh, disconnect the resistor and it's a 13.7 volt uh, no currents yet so let me turn the inverter on Okay, the inverter's on. It's a uh, 14 volts, so the inverter and my shunt voltmeter is not exactly the same. So right now, uh, it's drawing about 0.56 amp to just to support the inverter itself. So it's the overhead is 0.56 amp. So let me turn on the heater so the heater comes on and the current is now 55.7 amp about 55.7 amp and the wattage is uh, about 700 watt 711 watt so uh, even though the uh, circuit breaker is only for 50 amps and now it's drawing higher than 50 amps is uh, 55 amps and it won't trip because uh, per the standard uh, this circuit breaker would run up to 135 percent so it's about 67.5 amp for half an hour before it will trip so uh, this will not trip and pretty soon the circuit breaker would uh, heat up because uh, this is a uh, electro uh, mechanical device once it heat up it will trip the circuit 
but it should be a good for at least half an hour to an hour before uh, it actually heats up enough. And these are the uh, MOSFET. Again, uh, these are very good MOSFET. It took me a long time uh, to find them. Uh, they are not easily available. And let's check the temperature of the MOSFET. So the temperatures are 80 some degree Fahrenheit, but the uh, circuit breaker is already 107 degree because the resistance in the circuit breaker is almost two times as the uh, uh, MOSFET. So uh, this is going to be my future uh, battery disconnect solid state device and it's very efficient. I programmed this uh, LED that goes off. Uh, so if it is uh, running, the overhead is about 22 milliamps. If uh, the low voltage cut off, this will shut down and the sleeping voltage, I'm sorry, the sleeping current is only 3 milliamps. So this is an extremely uh, efficient device and the solid state device is more efficient than the uh, electromechanical device. Uh, this is 30 amp. This could run up to 80 amps but I only uh, use uh, 50 amps of it. And so it's still uh, running and the temperature of the circuit breaker is already 123 degrees almost. And the MOSFET is only uh, 90 some degree. And the MOSFET could go to easily 200 degrees with no problem. But uh, I don't want it to be that warm. That's why I put four of them in parallel to uh, reduce the resistance. So uh, this is it. Hope you uh, enjoy the video. Uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.